Okay, so we have just wrapped up Q1 2021, the earnings call. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in. Um, the live stream will be available uh, in a couple of hours. I think YouTube is processing it. Um, I'm not sure. I think some music was playing at the beginning and uh, YouTube doesn't like that. So the purpose of this video is to summarize the Q&A session which was held at the end of the earnings call. I mean, they had some great questions and I think a lot of the questions is what we shareholders have in mind. There was a few bombshells um, and then we'll go through the uh, financial highlights because there are a few things that I do want to point out from our income statement and from our balance sheet. So if you gain any value from this video, please make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. All right, so let's summarize some of the questions that were asked because we had some great questions. Um, there was a question about bottom line profitability. They asked, you know, when are you going to be profitable? And uh, the reply was that they are not focused on profitability. You know, their main focus right now is growth. We've seen this answer provided on numerous occasions by Alex Karp. He says the main focus is growth, okay? Growth in the commercial side of the business and growth in the government side of the business. In terms of bottom line profitability, that is not the focus right now. So there was also questions with regards to Microsoft, which was a bit strange because I never considered Microsoft to be a competitor. But there was a question asked with regards to what we thought about Microsoft as competition. And the, the answer was pretty much straightforward. We are not competing with Microsoft. We're in a completely different space to Microsoft. And there was another question asking whether, um, you know, whether we can match uh, Microsoft software to which they said, look, our platform our operating systems are uh, much more modern and much more superior to Microsoft. And they gave us examples of the impact of Foundry and how countries like the US and the UK have benefited from Foundry in terms of the uh, rollouts of the Cironi Vax. Um, so they were saying, look, Microsoft is not a competitor. Uh, they're pretty much not on our level. And that was great to hear. Now, they also now there was a question about Bitcoin, which I found really really interesting and the question was will you consider adding bitcoin onto the balance sheet as as form of cash and the answer was very surprising the answer was yes you know palantir are considering that as an option and you shouldn't be surprised to see palantir purchasing bitcoin and adding it onto our balance sheet which i really love that it shows the company's forward thinking they understand the impact of cryptocurrency on modern day finance you know the decentralization the blockchain i i got excited when i heard that in the live stream which you can check out shortly um there's also questions with regards to double click and demo day okay they wanted to know has it been fruitful what has been the results what has been the outcome of double click and demo day and the, the the answer was that we were able to sign up a range of small and medium sized businesses as a direct result of double click and as a result of demo day so for all the bears that were saying um, that the Palantir um, double click event was a waste of time, it didn't have any impact on the share price. Well, it may not have had any impact on the share price apart from it going down, but we did receive multiple small to medium sized businesses coming on board. And this is brilliant because, again, another bear case was that, you know, Palantir is only useful for blue chip companies, which is completely false. And the earnings call put to bed that theory. So, yes, they will plan to do a lot more double click events in the uh, future with the ambition of attracting even more business which will of course have an impact on our top line so there was a question about long-term identity which palantir said that they answered it flat out they said their goal is to be the most important software company in the world and that is currently being demonstrated right now again given the examples of the vac rollouts in the uk and the us it being the most efficient in the world and it's been a direct result of foundry they also provided examples of the impact our software is having from a defense point of view by this point i was even more bullish about palantir long term uh, there was a question about stock-based compensation that's been pretty much the major talking point you know sbc stock-based compensation what is the plans going forward and what about share dilution now the answer they provided was that the share dilution will be significantly low but the reason for the increased stock-based compensation is it's the same story again to incentivize quality talents okay to incentivize talent to stay within the business to stay within the company and they have no plans to stop stock-based compensation anytime soon and we have some questions from the likes of goldman sachs and morgan stanley which is very good you know these guys are big money in this game so the fact that they're paying attention and they're attending our earnings call is very good to see uh, and there was a question from goldman sachs about commercial business okay and the answer was pretty much simple 
commercial business is gaining more momentum and that was evident in the presentation from Q1. There were further questions about the impact of the C Roni and the answer was that the C Roni opened uh, the door for more conversation uh, with more businesses and those conversations eventually translated into revenue which is very good to see. They also said that they're having conversations with multiple businesses outside of the C Roni space, the healthcare space which we have also seen in a variety of contracts that we've won over the last quarter. Now, Morgan Stanley asked about pilot conversion to revenue, and the answer was straightforward. Pilot conversion to revenue is getting faster, okay? Overall, the Q&A section of the earnings call was fantastic. And what I do want to highlight from the financial statement, okay? So regardless of how the media want to paint this, this was key for me, okay? So... Q1 2020, okay, we generated $229 million in revenue versus Q1 2021, we generated $341 million in revenue. So over $100 million in revenue uh, year over year, okay? Now look at the cost though, okay? Look at the cost of revenue. The cost of revenue in Q1 2021 was only was $64 million, but the cost of revenue for Q1 2021 was only 74 million dollars okay so what that pretty much means is we spent about 10 million dollars to generate more than a hundred million dollars in revenue top line growth that's insane that is absolutely phenomenal we only spent 10 million more and that generated over a hundred million dollars more in top line growth insane absolutely insane guys and that led to gross profit of 267 million versus 165 million dollars year over year now as you can see we suffered a net loss of 123 million dollars and that's a deeper loss than we were in the previous quarter which was only 54 million dollars but this is where the bulk of the money was spent okay first of all sales and marketing so we spent a lot more on sales and marketing uh, we spent 98 million dollars in q1 2020 versus this year we spent 136 million dollars in q1 2021 r d okay research and development we spent 65 million dollars last year and this year we we spent 98 million dollars in terms of r d now this is very very common in high growth stocks you know amazon for years especially in the early 2000s and even relatively recent amazon spent heavy in sales and marketing heavy in R&D and look at where they are right now. So it's not uncommon to see high growth companies splash out on sales and marketing and R&D. And that's very good to see. Now, general and administrative. And as you can see here, we've got brackets one and that relates directly to the stock based compensation. OK, we doubled our general and administrative, uh, which is stock based compensation um, from 70 million dollars to 146 million dollars and this is the big question okay why are we continuing to splash out even more on stock-based compensation you don't produce gross margins like this and then suffer net losses like that it's a direct result of stock-based compensation which again they justified by saying it's to retain quality talents it is frustrating okay i'm not going to sit here and say it's not frustrating it is frustrating but it's working and i cannot emphasize this enough it's a system that is working and we simply have to be patient okay let's take a look at their balance sheet as of q1 last year we were sitting on 2 billion in cash and now we're sitting on uh, 2.3 billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents uh, total current assets also saw growth uh, we're at 2.2 billion as of q1 of last year and we're now at 2.5 billion in total current assets and with regards to that we want to make sure that the total current assets exceed the total current liabilities which it does massively at 667 million dollars versus 2.5 billion dollars which is very good to see now we want to make sure that our total as we want to make sure that our assets are growing much faster than the liabilities and to do that we check the stockholder equity we want to make sure that stockholder equity is growing significantly which it is because as of Q1 last year, we had 1.5 billion versus where we are now at 1.8 billion uh, in terms of stockholder equity. And that shows that assets are growing much faster than the liability. So our balance sheet, solid. Income statement, if it wasn't for stock-based compensation, would also be solid. So that's my summary of the Q&A session for the earnings call. That's my summary of our financial highlights. I think we had an awesome Q1. In terms of the share price reaction, Currently, we are up 5%, which is quite surprising. I honestly thought we would probably continue lower. And to be honest, <laughs> I honestly think we will finish the day in the red. It's just the type of market we're in right now. 
But um, this is very good to see. Good positive action. It's good to finally see Palente associated to green. But, I mean, we're in this long term, right? So this doesn't matter. And if it does continue lower, I'll continue just adding, strengthening my position. So that's my summary of Q1. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.